one of these three young men is a newly crowned national champion. What is your name, please? My name is Dennis Carr. What is your name, please? My name is Dennis Carr. What is your name, please? My name is Dennis Carr. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Dennis Kyle and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Geritol, America's number one tonic. Geritol, the fast-acting, high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger, fast, presents To Tell the Truth. And now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Good evening, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Now may I introduce our panel. What is your name, please? My name is Betty White. My name is John Cameron Swayze. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is High Gardner. <laughs> now, these three young men all claim to be Dennis Kyle. Only one, of course, is the real Dennis Kyle. The other two have merely assumed his identity, and they do not have to stick to the truth. A panel in front of you, there is a copy of the truth in the form of an affidavit. So will you please follow along while I read it? I, Dennis Kyle, was born, raised, and attend school in the state of West Virginia, where my father is the superintendent of a coal mine. In both 1956 and 1957, I reached the finals of the National Marbles Tournament, which is held each year at Asbury Park, New Jersey. This year, in competition with over three million other marble shooters, I set a new tournament record and won the title of 1958 National Marbles Champion. Signed, Dennis Kyle. Now, as you heard, panel, these three young men all claim to be Dennis Kyle, marble champion. Only the real Dennis Kyle must answer your questions truthfully. Each of you will, as usual, question until you hear this signal. At the end of the questioning period, you will cast your votes for the one who, in your opinion, is the real Dennis Kyle. And we'll start this evening's cross-examination in this first round with High Gardner. Hi. Well, you said real, uh, as I remember. Uh, number one, what is a really? What do you mean? What kind of a marble is a really? I don't know. Number two, do you know? No, sir. Number three? Uh, I think it really is a uh, real marble, considered real marble, not just... Uh-huh. Uh, number three, where in Asbury Park did you win the marble championship? Uh, I w uh, it was on the beach, actually. I mean, uh, they had a regular cork ring, and it was... Set well, they they had sand. cement on it. In other words, you didn't shoot in the sand. No, sir. Uh-huh. Number one, uh, in what hotel in, in Asbury Park did you stay while you were there? The Monterey Hotel. Uh-huh. Number two, where did you stay? Seaside Hotel. Number three, where did you stay? Holbrook Hotel. Beg pardon? The Holbrook Hotel. The Holbrook. Well, I'm glad it wasn't the half brook. <laughs> <laughs> Betty White, please. Number two, what are marbles made of? Well, they're made of glass. Why do you call them marbles? Well, because everybody calls them marbles. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> figures. Number three, what was this record you set? Well, I hit actually about 57 or 58 marbles in a row out of the ring. In that more than anybody else has ever done? No, sir. The regular record was about 37, 38. All right. Thank you. And number one, what's the capital of West Virginia? Charleston. Number two, what's the capital of West Virginia? Charleston. Charleston. John Cameron <laughs> Swayze. Number three, with your record, do you ever find anybody who'll play you marbles for fun? Yes, sir. You do. Do you favor the nuts up or the nuts down method of shooting? Nuts up, sir. Nuts up. What's an Aggie? An Aggie is what I shoot with. <laughs> Very good. Do they use uh, steelies anymore? No, sir. They're not allowed in the tournaments. Uh, why not? I don't know. Actually, the referee just told me I couldn't use them. <laughs> Number one, what are tickers? I don't know. Number two, things have changed since I was a boy. <laughs> Number two. No, I'm sorry. I don't know. Number three, do you know what tickers are? Well, tell me then, what's an Emmy, number three? Uh, an Emmy is what is used inside the ring. Kitty? Very good. Oh, this is just too much. 
<laughs> Did your father ever take you down in a coal mine, number one? Are you talking to me? Yeah, number one. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you better look at him when you talk to him. <laughs> I'm looking at you. Did your father ever take you down to the coal mine? Yes. What was it like? It's dark. <laughs> I shouldn't have pursued it. Number two, is your clown official? No, it isn't. Uh, you see, uh, when you become the champ, you're only the champ. Only uh, next year's tournament, and somebody else is the champion. You can't, you can't uh, join the next year's tournament. Well, are you or are you not the champ? Yes. For now. <laughs> That's it, panel. We've got all the questioning we have time for, and without consultation, will you mark your ballots? And in so doing, select number one, number two, or number three team of challengers will, as usual, collect $250 for every incorrect vote. And let's see how Betty White has marked her ballot. Betty? Well, I vote for John Cameron Swayze. He's the only one that could possibly keep up with number three. <laughs> and your vote, John? Well, I voted for number three also. I stuck with Betty. I was always a nux-up shooter myself, so that's why I stuck with number three. I find as I get older, it's nux down most of the time. <laughs> Kitty? I voted for number three on the basis of information which I did not understand. <laughs> you mean you were an old marble shooter? <laughs> no. And hi, what about your well, vote? I also voted for number three. It was rather difficult because all three of these uh, youngsters are bright and they all seem to have their marbles, but I think that Dennis, uh, <laughs> Dennis the Menace is number three. Okay, there you have it. Unanimous selection, and you've heard why our panel voted as they did. I wonder if you agree with them. We'll find out now whether you should agree or disagree as we discover which one of these young men is the real Marbles champion. So will the real Dennis Kyle please stand. Stop! <laughs> Boy, he's really got all his marbles. <laughs> <laughs> well, after all, if he wasn't the real one, he didn't have to be trusted. <laughs> Number two, tell us who you really are and what you do. Well, I'm Tommy Howard, and uh, I was born in Dallas, Texas, and I now live in Long Island. <laughs> and number three, what about you? My name's Charlie Norris, and I live in Old Grange, Connecticut, and I attend East Virginia High School. <laughs> <laughs> and you should also add that you uh, know just enough about marble shooting to fool the whole panel, too. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Quick checkup will tell you what you don't need to know because you already know it, I'm sure, boys. There were four incorrect votes at $250 each. You can do the dividing of $1,000 from Sheraton. Congratulations, and good night and good luck to you all. Bye. Now may we have our next team of challenges, please. What is your name, please? My name is William F. Tompkins. What is your name, please? My name is William F. Tompkins. What is your name, please? My name is William F. Tompkins. You've heard the name panel, now hear the facts. Follow along, if you will, with your copies of this affidavit. I, William F. Tompkins, am a lawyer. In 1953, President Eisenhower appointed me United States Attorney for the state of New Jersey. I was one of the youngest in the country. That year, I secured the indictment of the chief executioner of the infamous Murder Incorporated, Albert Anastasia, who later pleaded guilty and went to jail. In 1954, I was named Assistant Attorney General and called to Washington as the first chief of the newly formed Internal Security Division of the Department of Justice. I directed the successful prosecution of spies Jack and Myra Sobel and personally prosecuted master spy Colonel Rudolf Ivanovich Abel of the Russian NKVD, signed William F. Tompkins. <laughs> so 
So, panel, here we have three gentlemen all claiming to be William F. Tompkins, former chief of the Internal Security Division of the Department of Justice. And we begin this cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty. Thank you, bud. Number one, what does NKVD stand for? It is a Russian term. It's a Russian secret service. You don't know what the initials actually mean? It's a series of Russian words, which I... I um... Number two, what was uh, uh, Colonel Abel's ostensible means of livelihood? His ostensible means of livelihood were, was photography, and he was also an amateur photographer. Number uh, I'm two... I'm sorry, an amateur painter. Painter. Number two, uh, who is the present uh, chief of the Internal Security Division? <laughs> Number three, I mean. <coughs> Mr. Yeagley. Mr. Yeagley. Number three, I live in New Jersey in the summer. When is that causeway going to be finished to Long Beach Island? <laughs> I think your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. Uh, number one, uh, what masks did the murderer, uh, murderers of Anastasia wear? What uh, kind were... of masks? Number two, what Spring kind of were... masks? Hmm? Stockings, women's stockings. Hi, Gardner. Number one, what is the full name of a fellow named, nicknamed Tough Tony? That's uh, Tough Tony Anastasia. Uh -huh. Number uh, two, what former U.S. Uh, attorney recently was named uh, chairman of a committee of four an anti-crime commission designated by uh, Governor Harriman of New York? Uh, I believe his name was Lane. You know his first name? I am, I'm not certain. Number three, would you know who the person is I make reference to? I believe his name was Miles Wayne. Uh-huh. Uh, number uh, three, in what office was Roy Cohn an assistant uh, U.S. attorney before he went with the <coughs> McCarthy committee? Uh, in New York, I believe. Mm -hmm. Betty? Uh, number three, it says that you were appointed uh, assistant attorney general in 1954. Who was attorney general at that time? Herbert Brownell. Number one, who is the president's attorney general, present attorney general? Um. Number two, who is the president's attorney general? The successor, I'm sorry, I don't know. Number three? William Rogers. Number one, where was Anastasia killed? Uh, in the hotel at 57th Street, the uh, Park Sheridan. Number in two, the barber shop. Where was Anastasia killed? He was killed in the Park Sheraton Hotel between 55th and 56th Street and 7th Avenue. Number, no, John? <laughs> Sorry, Betty. <laughs> number three, after Albert Anastasia took that plea, how long did he actually serve in jail? He was sentenced, I believe, to a year. Did he serve the time? I believe he would probably get some time off for good behavior. Number two, what does tough Tony Anastasia do? What's he known for? He's known as the waterfront boss, dock boss. Number two, tell me, where is Colonel Abel now, the Russian spy? Uh, Colonel Abel is in jail. You know where he's held? Yes, I believe he's in Texas. Number three, is that correct? I believe that uh, Colonel Abel was held in jail in New York, in the West Street Jail. That's it. Time once again to vote. And again, without consultation, please mark your ballots. Voting thereby for number one, number two, or number three. <laughs> Betty, you're fast. Got your mind all made up? I'm not very <laughs> slow, but I'm pretty dumb. I, um, <laughs> Who's I'm going to try it again. I vote for number three because he did, did know the present attorney general. Mm -hmm. John Cameron Swayze, your vote. I voted for number three, strictly on a hunch. Kitty? I voted for number three but because of the Attorney General and because of misinformation from the other two, one and two. And hi? Well, we'll probably all get the murder sentence, but I also <laughs> voted number three. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Miles Lane had a lot of the answers. We're probably wrong. Well, you got at least you're unanimously wrong, if you are, if you were before. Let's find out, though, and the quickest way is to discover which one is the real former chief of the Internal Security Division of the Department of Justice. So may I ask the real William F. Tompkins to please stand up. There. I guess, kids. no, you sure can. <laughs> I guess you won your spurs back on that one. Let's find out about the others now. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? 
My name is George Lambert. I'm a mill representative for the Marvellum Company, paper converters in Holyoke, Massachusetts. Thank you, sir. And uh, number two, what about you, sir? Uh, my name is Jess Spear, and I'm with Hearst Advertising Service in New York. <laughs> well, I know the boys' faces brightened when I said they were all incorrect votes, but for you, there were no incorrect <laughs> votes. However, from Geritol, with our compliments, $150, gentlemen. We thank you very much for being with us, and on your way out, there is an apothecary jar of Geritol waiting for each of you. Good night and good luck. <laughs> Now may we have our third team of challengers, please. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Marjorie Cruz. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Marjorie Cruz. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Marjorie Cruz. Very well, panel. You've had a look. You've heard the name. Let's see what we have by way of an affidavit. Will you follow along, please? I, Marjorie Cruz, am a doctor of medicine specializing in anesthesiology. My spare time is devoted to horses and horse racing. I have been a licensed trainer since 1956, and I own and train two racehorses of my own. One week ago today, I was present as a consultant in the use of an anesthesia machine which I built while a team of veterinary surgeons performed an operation on this year's Kentucky Derby winner, Tim Tam. Signed, Marjorie Cruz. <laughs> so these three ladies all claim to be Dr. Marjorie Cruz, anesthesiologist and horse trainer. And we'll start this round with Betty White. Betty? Number three. How do you like Kitty's new hairdo? I like it very much. That's pretty. Oh, that's <laughs> pretty. Number two, what are the names of your two horses? Miss Bemelik and M.D. Number one? Miss Bemelik and D.J. Number three? Miss Bemelik and D.V. <laughs> well, well, if, um, if you were going to hang out a shingle, number one, what letters would you put after your name? M.D. Number two? M.D. MD. <laughs> MD. MD, number three. Uh, number one, what uh, were the circumstances around at the time that uh, Tim Tam was hurt? Where and when was he hurt? Oh, he was hurt in the uh, Belmont stake race at Belmont and uh, had his sesamoid bone fractured. You know how that hurts. Number two, <laughs> <laughs> where, where did this take place? At Belmont Park. Number three, when did this take place? Uh, about three weeks ago. Number three, tell me, why is it that only spavined horses win the Kentucky Derby? <laughs> I don't know. I... Number one, can you answer that? No, I don't know. I'm sorry. Number two? No, I don't know. I didn't know that. <laughs> 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 Number two? Uh, happy uh, sense of voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I said spavined. You understood that, all of you? Mm. Number two, how many bones in the, how is it, seismoid? Is that pr pronounced correctly? How many bones how many in the sesamoid bone? Yes, how many? Just uh, one, There's two, one three? There's one bone. Um, number one, who is Willie the Shoe? I don't know. I'm sorry. Number three, what is a morning glory? A morning glory is a horse who works very fast in the morning, but uh, doesn't go very fast in the afternoon. Number two, what? Kitty. Number one, what operation was performed on Tim Tam? Uh, Tin Tam had uh, 14 bone chips removed from his sesamoid bone, the oh. lower half of it. Number two, who rides your horses? Jockey. Who? <laughs> Jockey. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, are you seven? Yes. You are, where are you from? Kentucky. Ah. Number three, how do you spell anesthesiology? Wait, let me check it with you. <laughs> A-N-E-S-T-H-E-S-I-O-L-O-G-Y. Number one, what does it mean when a horse founders? He loses his shoe. Number two, what does it mean when he founders? He's eaten too much. He's eaten too much. Number three, do horses ever get sodium pentothal? No. 
Number one, what's the difference between uh, chloroform and ether, or are they the same? No, they are not the same. They're two different gases. Hi. Isn't that the truth serum you were talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why, do you have the talking horse somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> Wants to find out who's going to win. Uh, Naturally. Number one, who is Ken Kling? Ken Kling is a uh, cartoonist who draws a comic strip about horses. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, what is the name of the most famous racing paper in the United States? Morning Telegraph. Uh, how much do you pay for it? Fifty cents. Uh, number three, what is unusual about the Morning Telegraph, uh, you, uh, you know, when you buy it for a half a dollar? It has the complete charts on the horse's uh -huh. past performances. Uh, number two, uh, is there any such thing as a Blue Cross uh, hospitalization plan for ailing horses? <laughs> Why not? Is there number one? No. Number three? No. The answer is uh, nay, nay. Uh, number... <laughs> oh. And with that, I have to call a <laughs> Because it's time once again to vote. So will you kindly mark your ballots and vote for number one, number two, or number three. All set, panel? How about you, Betty? For whom did you vote this time? Well, I have time for a quick call to Polly. I don't know. <laughs> I just sort of say, I'm going to, this is against my better judgment because I know it isn't. I know it's number two, but I'm going to say number three because she was the only one that looked a little doubtful at the word spavined. I don't think it's any of them, frankly. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you don't think any of them is spavined? <laughs> John, what about you? Your vote. Well, I agree with Betty, but uh, I voted for number two. I guess I still agree with her. She said she thought it was really number two. <laughs> All right, get out of that one. Kitty? I voted for number two. Uh, I should have voted for number three, who liked my hairdo, but I knew that number two knew what foundered meant, and I believe she's right. You're all sounding more like Polly tonight than ever. <laughs> Hi, Gardner. I also voted for number two strictly on illogic. I can never pick a horse. Why should I be able to pick a doctor who works on horses? <laughs> All right, sir. There we have our votes and our reasons for them. And I hope you are as right or wrong as our panel, as you discover now which one of these three ladies is the real anesthesiologist and horse trainer. So we will ask the real Dr. Marjorie Cruz to please stand. At number one, I'm going back to California. <laughs> 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 you still uh, think it's number two now, do you, Betty? I knew it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> number one, did you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is Mrs. Joan King. I'm a freelance uh, fashion coordinator. I live in Westport, Connecticut. <laughs> and number two, what about you? I'm Elizabeth Nash, the mother of a two-year-old boy who lives on Long Island. <laughs> My name is Sammy Sesamoid, and I want to tell you that in checking up the score, we found that there was one correct and three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 in Geritol, ladies. Hope you enjoyed your visit. We certainly enjoyed having you here. Good night and good luck, and on your way out, stop and pick up your apothecary jar of Geritol. Bye. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight, except on behalf of all of us, I do want to thank you, Betty White, for having been with us these last three weeks. It's been a real joy. Well, it's sure been fun for me, God, and I'm going to be awfully glad to see Polly back here again next week. <laughs> yeah, I'll Polly be back next week. Yeah, I'll tell you what, just so you don't forget us, on behalf of myself and the panel, let us give you a, a To Tell the Truth game. You can take it along oh. with you, play it on the train, you know. Just <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> just have a ball, okay? <laughs> take it right sure along will. with Thank you. Thank you, but okay. if I forget you. Now, uh, next week, of course, we have... Uh, Polly back. And John, may I thank you very much for being with us tonight, old friend? Oh, it's a pleasure. Always oh, a, a pleasure. joy to have you back with us. Jackie Cooper will be taking over for you next week. Oh, good. Good. And I guess that's about all the vital statistics, except to say good night, panel. Good night, Bud. Good, good night, Betty. And this is Bud Collier saying good night from Geritol and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> To Tell the Truth is the Mark Goodson, Bill Godwin production in association with the CBS Television Network.